Good afternoon. I have no idea what time it is. This is Alex Vidal, president of Related ISG International Realty, sitting here with probably one of the most influential real estate players in South Florida, but from what I learned in other parts of the country as well. Uh, this is our fifth episode of Inquiring Minds Want to Know with the famous, and this guy's amazing, this guy's got more energy than I could ever believe, Stephen G. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. All right, so we're going to look at the camera, Stephen. Five minutes, a bunch of questions. Usually we do three, but after having my conversation with Mikey this morning, I have more questions for you. So we're going to, we're going to go break the mold of what we've done with everybody else just for you. Story of my life. Keep going. All right, let's go. So, Steve, where are you from? How did you end up here in South Florida? And why and when did you start Stephen G? Uh, I was born and raised in Queens, New York. Um, what took me to South Florida was a high school sweetheart. Huh. Um, and uh, I came down and never left. And that was 47 years ago. 47. Wow. Now, why did you start CVG? How did you get into interior design? Um, I started working for a boutique design firm at the time on off the Godfrey Road. Okay. Uh, they expanded and moved into Hallandale into a huge warehouse facility and uh, built a very substantial business. Um, and I was with the firm and became a minor minority partner. Um, for 10 years of my career, um, saw what I would call a better mousetrap, a different way that I felt the design world and a business should be run. So I opted to leave the firm after 10 years and start Interiors by Stephen G from the den of my home. The den of your home? Yes, sir. And today, how big would you say Stephen G is? Um, our showroom and corporate headquarters are 108,000 square feet. Okay. 108,000 square feet, guys. From we, a den of it in his home. We employ 82 people and growing. Okay. Um, we speak and write seven languages fluently. And we're doing this all over the country. Our trucks are rolling to LA, Washington, New York, the Jersey Shore the Hamptons, on and on and on, Manhattan. Your trucks, you know, I remember it was probably 20 years ago, I was driving through Surfside, and I saw this big truck, Interiors by Stephen G. I'll never forget it. Those trucks, uh, they make a statement in South Florida. They really do. Well, you know, people say we become a brand. I'm not sure if we become a brand or a dessert, one of the two. Um, but today we're running six trucks, and uh, a seventh, which is a 53-foot tractor trailer, which goes all over the country. Wow. Holy crap. Congrats, man. Thank you. Now, Stephen, uh, how many real estate developments do you currently represent? And, uh, well, I guess, how many real estate developments do you represent in South Florida? And can you give our viewers an idea of the current developers you're working with? Okay. We are involved in the state of Florida with 31 or 32 projects okay. for developers. Um, we're doing Merrick Manor. Okay. which is uh, Mr. Henry Torres and his company. Um, we are doing Aventura Park Square. Um, we are doing the project for the Sofers, the Turnberry Project with Dan Reardon. We are um, doing Privé, which of course just um, sort of came out with a bang in the marketplace a year ago, uh, give or take. Um, and it's been a an amazing, amazing ride for us there. Um, it's the third project that we're doing for Greg Friedman, Gary Cohn, and, and Dan Liebenson at BH3. Um, we not only work for developers, but we're redoing buildings for luxury condo associations all over town. And you just got hired by one of the other major developers in South Florida. Yes, we are super excited about our new relationship with Swire. Swire. And we are doing 10 models that we have already started at uh, Brickell City Center at Rise. Um, we love building relationships. We love uh, the relationship that we've built with ISG and Swire and Miley. Um, and we're looking forward to being a tremendous part of their success in selling out the remaining inventory. Awesome. 
Now, uh, how would you say interior design has changed in South Florida since you started Stephen G? I think you said 34 years ago. So 34 years ago to today, how much has it changed? It, it is something that consistently is evolving. When I started in the design world in South Florida, if you didn't do canary um, yellow and lime green and white, you weren't selling anything. Everything years ago was geared towards what people believed to be the Florida look. So it was white and colorful and vacationing. As Florida evolved from basically going from just Americans, really, which is what it was that many years ago, it has become a melting pot of people from all over the world. Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, you know, just everywhere. What people find difficult to understand is how sophisticated third world countries are. Um, but the market has become like New York, like LA, like Chicago, like Boston. Florida today in the way of design is sophisticated as any place in the world. Um, there are designers coming here from all over the world. You know, they're not coming here because they're coming here, you know, for nothing better to do. They're coming here because it's, I don't know, maybe you'd call it open range. Yeah. Um, and they're trying to cash in. At the end of the day, our business continues to grow. Our showroom is amazing. We have, of course, high end from all over Europe. And then we have our now collection which is made for the investor, made for the vacationer, that doesn't want to spend a lot of money, and we can furnish it almost overnight. See, I've heard that much, by the way. You show up the next day and furnish it. Now, we talked a little bit about this prior to starting this. You talked about units that don't sell, that all of a sudden you come in and you furnish them and you get them designed, sell right away. What is it about an unfurnished unit versus a furnished unit that makes it sell like that? Okay. First of all, we have been doing that for the entire career of Stephen J. I have always believed that if a buyer that was looking to spend a half a million dollars walks into a furnished unit and their wife loves it and it's 550, they're not running away. So it becomes instant gratification. Okay. You don't have to hire a designer. You don't have to hire a flooring man. You don't have to hire a contractor. You don't have to pay maintenance, electric, and taxes while you can't use the unit for months. So you walk in, and in any price point today, at Privé, we did four model apartments. Average price was $750,000. Well, they sold them in record time. We're now doing new ones. Okay? So a person that is buying real estate never will tell the realtor or the sales associate what their budget really is. They give them a range because they know that they could go higher, but they don't want to tell them that. So if they walk in and they see an apartment that's $2 million and it's on the water, or it's $3 million or $4 million, and it's four and a half, and they love it, and it's finished, can't miss. Um, and you'll see that at Brickle City Center very shortly. I know, I know Craig's, Craig hasn't shut up about it. He's very excited. Very, very excited. Are there any elements in South Florida that inspire your design? Well, at the end of the day, there's what I believe many different types of designers. There are designers that deliver the same look because they've been successful and they use the adage, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Okay. I believe the true success of Stephen G, forgetting about the fact that we can get a job done in record time, is designing for the client, for the target market of the developer. You have to hit the market. If you don't, and you're just looking to pound your chest and say, look how great my design is as a designer, and it doesn't sell, or don't relay, you failed. So we work super hard in understanding the market, whether it's the Gables, Sunny Isles, Fort Lauderdale,
Palm Beach, which we're very big in. Um, uh, Singer Island, we've probably done almost every project that's been built in the last 12 years. Uh, all different developers within a two mile stretch and we've been successful because we developed a look for each project. And I'm assuming that the design differs whether you're in Brickell or if you're at Muse in Sunny Isles Beach, right? 100%. Okay. We're, we're, we've been hired to do two full floor penthouses by buyers of Muse. Very individual taste, defined direction. And then we've been hired by people at Muse who are looking for our direction. You know, we had a great run at um, Aquilina Mansions. Mm -hmm. We did two 10,000 square foot full floor units and four half floors, 5,000 square foot. For different people from all over the world, a New York based couple, um, a Canadian based couple, or I'll say Montreal based, um, South America, um, Long Island, so, you know, a diverse group of people. Every apartment is totally different. It must be so much fun. It's like a blank can, a 10,000 square foot blank canvas. Well, the one that we just finished that we're super excited about and we think is going to be on Channel 10 in the next week or so, we just finished an 11,000 square foot penthouse in the Grove on a brand new project. Um, and we're super excited. They want to film it with us in the next week or so. So awesome. we'll see. Congrats, man. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Last question, then I want to ask you a couple of residential real estate questions sure. in particular. Uh, where do you think the future of interior design is going, or what kind of trends are you seeing now? Are there any trends, or is it really just I, 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 I think the day of a trend is, is sort of way past. Interesting. Okay. You know, Ferrari is expensive. Yes, do they change numbers all the time? Do they really change style? You can spot a Ferrari, whether it's eight years old or a year old. Sure. So at the end of the day, we believe we're the Ferrari of the industry. We believe that the trend is not something that needs to be set or is set. We believe the success is the quality and the test of time that the product will stand. Interesting. Great. All right, cool. By the way, have, do you have a Ferrari? I do. You do? Do you like pickup trucks? I do. I just bought a Ford Raptor. I'll show it to you when we're done. It's a beast. I know. I have a friend that has one. Oh, I love it. They're awesome. All right. So let's get some residential real estate questions done, and then we're done because I did want to break my mold with you. Aside from the three questions, go longer than the five minutes. Pleasure. Um, we all know about how important curb appeal is in a home or the first impression when it's a condo and you open that, that door, okay? If there's one thing that is a must in order to create a great first impression, whether it's a single family home or when you open that condo door, what would it be? Space. Space. You always want to make real estate look larger than it is. Okay. You don't want somebody to walk into a front door and it might be over designed where it almost feels closed in. It's all about space and breathing. People love to breathe. People love to be felt. Um, open, airy, and not cluttered. Got it. So realtors, if you have a listing that's cluttered, make sure you tell your clients to open it up and give them space. Or sometimes you're you're better off emptying out the unit and just giving it a, a fresh coat of paint. Got, okay, so we're gonna ask about that actually in a Got second. It. What are some quick, easy fixes to make a room look good? Well, first of all, key is always a floor. You know, the flooring world has changed so in the last 10 years where 99.9% .9 of the world wants porcelain. Why? It could be anything you want it to be in look, <clears throat> but it's indestructible. It doesn't chip, scratch, or stain, easy to clean. People in any price point love that. Another quick fix is definitely a clean coat of paint. Take off the old vertical blinds and the old window treatments, open her up, and add some lighting. Lighting is the key to success of any residential or commercial project. You'd be shocked at how many times realtors show a listing and the blinds are closed and they don't show up five minutes before to just open the blinds and, and get the back. So we talked about paint. What are some good neutral, I will skip a question. Uh, what are some neutral colors to paint a room when prepping it to sell? Just an off-white, a cream color, very subtle. Do not paint high gloss. It shows every imperfection. Okay. You definitely want to paint in a flat finish. Got it, flat finish. Last question and then we'll, we'll end it here. 
A lot of realtors have vacant listings. We talked about this prior. You know, you have a South American that bought a condo, they want to flip it now, and it's vacant. But what we encounter as realtors is the seller doesn't want to spend the money. They don't want to spend the money to stage it. But sometimes we can convince them to invest a little bit. If there's one room in the condo or the house that can be staged, one room, and you tell your customer, hey, spend X number of dollars and stage just this one room, what would it be? I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it? No. I, I don't believe staging is the ticket to the sale. No. And I say this respectfully to people that are in the staging business. Uh -huh. Most of the product that is used for staging is product that gets sort of recycled. Okay. And it's used over and over again. And it's nothing custom designed for the space. Does it make it look better? Yes. Does it make it sell faster? Maybe. Does it make it sell faster for a bigger number? That's the key. What we do is very different, and again, super successful. Realtors, if you have a client with a brand new piece of investment real estate, or something that might be older, and you would like to have that edge that nobody else maybe in the building has or in the community has, Interiors by Stephen G will go in and furnish the unit first class at an agreed upon budget with your seller and give them one year to sell it furnished or pay. So we will front the money to go in and do it the right way regardless of price. And we have been immensely successful. And if, so let's talk about that because we're here and then Lisa, I'm gonna ask you to end the video when we're done here. Um, if I'm a seller, I bring in Stephen G, I, you furnish my unit for free. Now I got to sell it furnished, but if within a year it doesn't sell, you have to pay. You're buying the furniture. That is correct. So at the end of the day, we have yet in 34 years to not be successful with the process. Our latest one is right now, and you mentioned earlier that Gil Nezer was on the program yep. with you. We just finished, I think it's the 36th floor, ocean front with that pool, swimming pool on the patio. We just finished for an investor who bought one there. They they spent eight hundred thousand with us wow. in a multi million dollar unit that in the next two weeks is going to be auctioned by one of the biggest auction houses in the world. They have eleven thousand inquiries in a week about the real estate. So we're hoping for a real wow and we just finished the apartment four weeks ago. Wow. So yeah. There's a lot of other ways to that I could be creative for realtors, and I have been, um, as you know, some of them, and many of them. Um, so realtors, if you have something that you think could be of interest, we would be glad to discuss it. We'll meet you at the unit, we'll look at it, we'll give you an opinion, good, bad, or indifferent. It'll probably be the most upfront opinion that you'll ever hear, because I have no filter. Uh, we talked about that already. Yes. Realtors, if you got to get an interior designer, there's nobody better in this business in the country, let alone South Florida, than Stephen G. Stephen, thanks, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Lisa, I need you to press the uh, the end button. Bye, guys. Thanks, man. Super. That was fun. Yeah. I got to spend more time on videos and podcasts. <laughs>